Hello, everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. I'm Jeremy Crosby. Hope you had a wonderful day. Glad you're tuning in for a special edition of Talking Fitchburg. We got a jam-packed show for you. We're going to be talking about uh, sprinkler systems as it's National Fire, uh, is it like National Fire Sprinkler Week? And uh, as part of all of that, uh, we have a special guest lined up. Guy from Kenosha Fire Department will be here, instrumental in uh, movement of home sprinkler systems. We're going to break that all down for you coming up. But I do want to get to a quick headline before we do go to that. Uh, and it's the Fitchburg Sustainable Bike Tour. It's going to be happening this weekend. If you're interested in being a part of this tour, it starts at City Hall and you go on about a two to two and a half hour bike uh, uh, session, uh, checking out uh, a real cool uh, sites across our city uh, with uh, uh, sustainability in mind. If you're interested in doing this, you got to register. But I want to make sure you do uh, register here and be ready to go for that on Saturday. And uh, now we are going to go right into that interview with Adam Dorn and Guy from the Kenosha Fire Department. Check it out. It's a very special uh, day here on Talking Fitchburg. Adam Dorn uh, comes through again, and I say that nicely. Adam has done a great job of setting up great interviews uh, all of this year. Uh, and this uh, is going to be uh, another great one as uh, we're talking about Home Fire Sprinkler Week here in the nation. And uh, we want to uh, talk uh, specifically with somebody who knows uh, a little bit about home fire sprinklers uh, in the uh, home. Adam Dorn, uh, what do you got for us today? Well, well thanks again, Jeremy, for having us back. And uh, yeah, we've got an awesome guest with us today. Um, someone that I've known for Oh, goodness, six, seven, eight years, maybe? I don't even remember. Um, but he's he's been just a wealth of knowledge. He's someone that you can go to when you have questions about fire prevention, uh, fire codes, uh, safety, any anything, really. You can go to him, and he, he has the answer. And if he doesn't, he'll, he'll help you find the right place to get it. Um, we're talking about Guy Sintelli out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, the fire department down there. He's a division chief of fire prevention. Um, He's also the secretary for the Wisconsin State Fire Inspectors Association. That's actually how I got to know him. Um, and he's also on a couple of NFPA committees. I will let him talk about those uh, specifically. I don't want to steal his thunder there, um, but he, I'd call him an expert when it comes to uh, fire prevention and home fire sprinklers because uh, he's got some pretty cool stuff going on in his own home too that he He's very proud about and rightfully so. Um, so without further ado, I'll just introduce Mr. Guy Sintelli. Guy, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, including me on uh, such an important topic this week. Absolutely. And I just noticed here that the way you have your camera tilted up, we can see some of those sprinkler heads in the back of you. So uh, I don't know if you did that uh, purposely or not, but uh, hey, we uh, we like that. Uh, diving right into this, uh, Guy, uh, let's uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Adam uh, did a great job here of uh, setting us up for uh, uh, what uh, your kind of your background. But uh, how did you get involved in the home sprinkler uh, systems in, the, in as far as fire suppression? Well, uh, uh, back in as far as uh, 2008, uh, 2007 uh, era, uh, Governor Doyle appointed me to a uh, national committee uh, on fire sprinklers. And then uh, he also uh, asked if we would start a uh, state coalition. And uh, we, we actually did put one of those together. It's Wisconsin uh, Fire Sprinkler Coalition. And uh, uh, right now it's run through the uh, Professional Firefighters Association. Uh, association through the state. And um, uh, I have since uh, stepped down and there's other guys that are running that, but I'm still a member of that committee. Um, I no longer head it, uh, but uh, I was one of the founding uh, fathers with uh, putting that committee together and uh, getting home sprinklers, uh, more awareness about home sprinklers uh, for the state of Wisconsin. And uh, that coalition is doing a good job um, obviously, we have some uh, hurdles that we're still uh, trying to uh, jump over, but uh, we can discuss those later. Um, then uh, uh, the NFPA uh, got a hold of me and uh, asked me to do uh, their um, uh, faces of, of fire uh, voiceovers. So uh, I was doing those um, for the NFPA, and one of the main reasons they picked me uh, when my wife and I uh, built a home in uh, 2010, uh, we uh, automatically uh, thought that fire sprinklers were an important part 
Uh, so we, we uh, installed a fire sprinkler system in our home. Um, contrary to the beliefs that uh, our kids would throw balls at the sprinkler heads and would uh, knock the sprinkler heads off and they would uh, hang hangers from them. And um, it's all a matter of uh, how you teach and uh, uh, make your kids aware of what is protecting them in their house, just not their parents protecting them. And um, my house has gone through anywhere from a nine month old all the way up to a 21 year old now. And uh, nobody uh, has, uh, we haven't had any false alarms at my house. Nobody throws balls at them because uh, just what we're there to do in the Fire Prevention Bureau, we're here to educate. And uh, we educated our kids right from the start that uh, those were safety items that were installed in the house to protect them and uh, keep, keep them safe even when mom and dad weren't home. And uh, we weren't to play with those. We weren't to throw anything at them. And we were, we were to respect them and make sure that uh, they were there when we needed them. Uh, it goes back to, uh, we've got a couple bunk beds in our house and uh, the upstairs has sidewall pendants. And uh, um, there's one probably six, eight inches from uh, where they could touch them. And they don't because we educated them. And the more we educate people on them, um, the more comfortable people will feel with them. And uh, hopefully we can start getting everybody on board to, uh, to put them in their homes. So the, I think the big question to, to kick things off here is it, why are sprinklers so important overall? Why, why do we need to have them? Um, whether it's in a commercial building, home, anywhere, what, what's, the, what's the point? Why? Well, I think uh, the biggest thing to, to take home from this is uh, why we need them is, is the, we're building more and more out of plastics. We're building more and more uh, with glue. Uh, and particle board versus uh, what we call the legacy era of the 60s and 70s and even the early 80s where things were made out of solid wood, things were made out of cotton, things were made out of um, cotton batting, uh, they were made, furniture and beddings were made with springs um, and things nowadays were moving towards plastics, more polys, more glues, more particle boards, and those things burn much, much quicker. And um, when you start watching the videos and when you start understanding that it took a fire anywhere from 18 to 22 minutes to get to flash over, and it was a very slow burn because we were burning cottons, we were burning uh, uh, fabric batting, we were burning metal, we were burning whole pieces of woods versus today uh, where we get to flash over in three to four minutes uh, in a home because we are using polyurethanes, we're using glues, we're using plastics, we're using wood particles and wood chips versus solid wood and things burn much quicker. So we don't have, uh, we don't have the amount of time to safely get out of our house like we used to. And, um, um, like I tell everybody, I could care less about the material things in my home. It's making sure that my children and my family get out of that house. Um, and as once everybody's out, that place can burn down for all I care. Everything in there is replaceable, uh, but the human life is not replaceable. And uh, as soon as we get everybody to get over that hurdle and get over the hurdle that it costs, it costs me less to put in my sprinkler system than it did the granite countertops that my wife picked out for the whole house. So um, it, as soon as people put a price uh, on life safety is when we're gonna start understanding this more. But the, the whole premise to the sprinkler systems in the homes is we have less time to get out now. And we have that smoke accumulates a lot quicker than it did 30 years ago. Um, and we want to make sure that people get out safe. Absolutely. And Adam, uh, uh, sticking on that theme uh, from your experience here in Fitchburg uh, in responding, I mean, I guess a two part question, you, your firsthand experience of a sprinkler versus not sprinkler um, fire, but also how long does it take uh, from the time you guys get paged to get 
to a fire and and the difference there of having a homes or having a sprinkler in general versus not uh, what's that outcome look like okay, great question jeremy so let's start with like the response time because that's that's pretty much standard right um so if once the fire is detected so we're going to start at the time the fire is detected uh if there's no a sprinkler system there, which would be connected to an alarm system. By the time that is reported, to the time we get notified, to the time we're on scene, that's somewhere between, you know, five to eight minutes. It's a long time. Um, it's a long time uh, for the fire to grow. A fire doubles in size every minute, roughly. Um, so one of the things to think about is that once that fire is detected, that's kind of when our clock starts. We don't know how soon before the clock starts, the fire actually started. So if we have smoke detectors or fire sprinklers in this case, the sprinklers could uh, activate in a minute or minute and a half or, or so, depending on the type size of the fire, how fast it grows, how much heat's produced. Um, and that alone can save building property. It, what it really does most importantly is allows people time to get out of the structure or the building so uh, we haven't had any fires in fitchburg where um, actually we have had one fire uh, in an apartment building that did not have a sprinkler system a fire started and a person passed away because of the fire um, a few years ago we have well, more than a couple times in the last few years we've had fires in uh, sprinkled apartment buildings where it's literally been just the kitchen that has been affected by the fire because the sprinkler actually put it out and it was one sprinkler head it wasn't all the sprinkler heads as you see in the movies when they pull the fire alarm or if there's smoke smoke does not set off sprinklers heat does um, one sprinkler head will slow or stop the fire i'm going to say about 90 percent of the time um, I think it's actually higher than that, but the majority of the times where fire is uh, stopped or slowed, it takes two heads and it's almost nearly always extinguished. Um, so it makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, one of the other things to think about is that the amount of water that the firefighters are using to put out a fire, when we come in to put out a fire in most places, we're flowing 150 gallons per minute at a minimum. The sprinkler heads use much less than that. And so there will be much less damage uh, from the fire and the water that needs to be cleaned up as well. The other thing that's, been, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I, I, I it's great information and I, I don't wanna interrupt you. Uh, I'll tell you what, Dorn uh, and Guy, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna continue our conversation on the other side of the break. Uh, we're lucky enough to uh, have uh, Guy here from Kenosha Fire uh, Department and we're gonna continue our home sprinkler talk on the other side of the break. Stay with us, you're watching Talking Fitchburg. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. We're continuing our talk today about home sprinkler systems in your uh, well, home sprinkler systems. I say it right there in the title. Uh, good thing I'm leading this. Uh, we've got uh, the guy here from uh, Kenosha Fire Department, Adam Dorn, uh, continuing our conversation. A uh, guy uh, uh, talking about uh, how much water is pushed through uh, and um, I'm a suspecting here that the more sprinklers you have in the home, the better chances uh, that uh, a fire is going to be put out. Um, but uh, I guess uh, talk through that front. Adam kind of set us up with uh, uh, what it looks like uh, for those fires getting out. Uh, but uh, success rates uh, with, with sprinkler systems in the homes, how does that look? Yeah, so um, Adam was close, um, you know, uh, but uh, one head is uh, typically controls the fire 97% of the time. And then uh, we, uh, if, if a second head does have to go off, two heads normally control it 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. Um, Adam was correct in saying that uh, typically when we go into a home with an inch and three quarter attack line, uh, we are putting out anywhere from 125 gallons uh, to 150 gallons of water a minute. That is a lot of water. That water does a lot of damage. 
And um, we need that amount of water because the fire grows in such a high rate at that uh, doubles in size every 30 seconds to a minute, as Adam was saying. Um, so we need that amount of water because a uh, small fire and then we get on scene anywhere from four to eight minutes uh, from the time we receive it. Um, uh, that's why we need that 125 to 150 gallons a minute to extinguish a large fire. But when the fire is small and in its incipient stage and it is um, uh, growing and it gets to that 155 degrees to make that sprinkler head pop open, uh, and then that sprinkler head only puts out 12 gallons of water a minute, but it uses that deflector that's attached to that sprinkler head in an effective way to spread those water a droplet, those droplets of water, and um, extinguish that fire with only 12 gallons of water a minute. Now, if it takes us um, eight minutes, six, eight minutes to get there, and we shut that off, we're talking whatever, uh, you know, 12 gallons a minute times eight minutes is versus us coming and opening up a bale for one minute. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm using firefighter terms here, a, a nozzle, opening up a nozzle for a minute and we get 150 gallons out for two to three minutes. Um, that's a lot of water and it's a lot of damage to take care of a lot of fire damage. And if we can put that out with only 12 gallons of water a minute, uh, for a couple of minutes, uh, we have less fire damage and we have less water damage. And then we have to be, um, uh, the fire department has to be quick acting in um, making sure the fire's out first and then um, uh, suppressing the water and shutting that sprinkler system off. So Adam was correct. Um, just a couple of uh, little updates there. Uh, no problem. Adam's uh, okay with that, uh, taking updates. Uh, uh, Guy, looking at it across the state of Wisconsin specifically, um, how many homes uh, have home sprinkler systems uh, in them? Or, uh, do you have a percent uh, and is that growing? Um, it, I don't have a percentage for you. Um, and the, the, the International Residential Code um, is, is the sprinkler system is in the International Residential Code. Uh, unfortunately, Wisconsin chose to pluck it out um, and not require it. Uh, state of Minnesota has it, uh, the state of California has it, state of Arizona has it. Um, and so, but um, in Wisconsin, we don't have it. And um, so uh, the days that it has to be taken or I'm sorry, the amount of homes that have to be, um, that are done in, in Wisconsin are very limited. Uh, typically it is if somebody writes a zoning ordinance where fire departments uh, have a long time or a, uh, or if somebody has a long driveway, I know in Pleasant Prairie uh, right next to me, if, uh, if somebody has a driveway over X amount of feet, they require them to put a sprinkler system in their house. Um, and that's something that you can do locally with zoning ordinances. Um, we're a mid-max state, so we can't do an or in, a, in a general ordinance um, to make it more restrictive uh, in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we were doing something interesting here in Kenosha. Uh, all of our habitat for homes, uh, habitat for humanity homes uh, were sprinkled. And uh, I got on board with the uh, local committee and uh, told them that we could get a majority of the stuff donated as long as after it was installed, the people would take uh, ownership of it and make sure that it was maintained properly. So um, since, oh, I want to say 2015, maybe 2014, that every home that has been built uh, by Habitat for Humanity um, has had the opportunity to have a sprinkler system installed. So uh, typically those are lower income families. Uh, typically um, they help build their house and they actually see the process that's happening and they understand the process and we teach them while, while it's happening. Um, as I said earlier, I have one in my home. Um, and uh, so the, it's, it's a growing trend. Um, the interesting thing was when I built mine, I was basically educating my contractor, uh, my general contractor. Uh, he is a contractor that uh, him and his sons only build custom homes. 
Um, they only build three to four homes a year, uh, but they are very um, astute to um, the needs of their customers. And I actually got them to offer it as a option. Um, and we hooked them up with a couple of sprinkler companies that would um, estimate them appropriately. Uh, they typically, uh, new construction typically estimates at a dollar and a quarter a square foot. Um, so um, uh, when you take into account the basement of my house, along with the two stories, uh, I had 4,200 or 4,600 square feet at a dollar and a quarter. My, um, my bill was uh, $5,850. And that's exactly what it came out to when I installed it in my house. Um, so uh, these smaller homes, uh, these Habitat for Homes typically are anywhere from 900 square feet to 1,300 square feet. And um, you know we're doing these homes for under $2,000, uh, very, very easily under $2,000. And um, I guess it, uh, it all comes down to if you, truly, if you truly educate and you truly make people understand that only one head goes off, and I'm pointing to this head right here, <laughs> uh, if that fire is directly around in a 12-foot area, directly around that head, and that heat produces, a, that fire produces enough heat to get that sprinkler head to go off right there, um, it will... Uh, put that fire out or at least contain it until the fire department can get on scene. And that, to put a price on that is, uh, is priceless in my opinion. I was just going to say, I don't think you, I think that right there in itself explains this, the, the price the outweigh, or, you know, the benefits outweigh the price uh, certainly uh, in doing this. I think that I'm glad you shared about new construction installing, uh, but uh, I'm in a home already built, already there, already established. Can I get a home sprinkler system in a pre or already built home, older home, whatever the case may be, can that be done? Yes, you can. Um, they, uh, they fish through walls just like um, uh, an electrician would fish through a wall to put in a new box or a new outlet or a new uh, light fixture somewhere. So they fish through walls. Um, they have decorative gusset plates for in corners. Um, they have uh, decorative I-beams uh, that they can use. Uh, um, like uh, I'm looking at, at your background, looks like you're sitting by a nice uh, rustic fireplace there. Um, you know, they can put a beam, um, a, a fake beam above uh, wood, uh, I shouldn't say fake, a wood beam above and cover those heads. Uh, typically, um, depending on uh, the decor you go with, whether it's fish through the walls or whether you're starting to add beams, sometimes you get into that 275 to three dollars a square foot for um, rehabs uh, and that is because it takes the time to, to fish the walls um, there's more labor um, on the installation end of it because we're essentially working blind um, you know you're trying to get stuff through walls uh, up to second stories second stories are typically more difficult to do um, but a ranch is relatively easy to do Okay. Yeah, I think that's good to know for people that who are, are on the fence on whether to do it or not. Uh, and then ongoing maintenance for for the sprinkler systems. You kind of mentioned that a little bit uh, here, but uh, what does that look like? Are we getting them tested regularly? Um, what uh, what is that um, look like? So probably the biggest thing that you have to do um, when you have a sprinkler system in your house is there's something that's called a backflow preventer, and that's a double check valve that uh, prevents the water from flowing backwards into your domestic water because that water that sits in the pipes uh, of the sprinkler system is ready to go and it's stagnant. It just sits there, okay? Um, you don't want that water flowing back into your domestic uh, uh, water like you would use to drink out of the sink, uh, make ice cubes with, uh, with your automatic ice maker, flush your toilets, take your shower with. So um, they come in and they test that backflow preventer to make sure that that is holding pressure and that check valve is working correctly so that water doesn't come back into your domestic water. Then what they're gonna do is they're gonna walk around your house. They're gonna make sure that all your clearances are appropriate. They're gonna make sure that your water pressure is still there. Um, and then uh, uh, basically they're gonna leave your house and give you a report on if anything needs to uh, take, be taken care of. Uh, my annual inspection costs $75. Uh, 
not a huge cost. Um, if you amateurize it out over 12 months, uh, what is it? Uh, nine bucks a month and uh, it's less than nine dollars a month it's seven dollars a month so i mean uh when when you look at it um if you can't stop going to starbucks two days a week um to maintain your sprinkler system um uh, you have more important things on your mind than for the life safety aspect of your of your house so yeah it's uh, uh good to know and uh you know, overall, uh, kind of puts it in perspective as far as uh, pulling it uh, all together. Uh, final one, I heard you guys kind of mention maybe uh, 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 looking at different types of sprinklers and those being connected to your uh, to alarm system. So is that a common practice when these are installed in the homes? Are they typically if it goes off? Is it going to set a smoke detector off or a smoke detector goes off? You know, uh, is there alarming systems to those? Uh, how does that uh, work? I mean, I know the sprinkler head itself needs the heat to go off, but uh, if it does go off, can that alert you or is there that type of technology? So um, typically um, sprinkler systems in the state of Wisconsin are required to be monitored by a fire alarm. Um, and uh, monitoring means as soon as water flows, uh, and there's a trigger uh, right above the uh, check valve that uh, water flow, water's flowing. It, uh, uh, for lack of better terms, a little flapper in the pipe starts moving and then it, sh it uh, sends a, an alarm to your alarm panel and then your alarm panel dials out to your monitoring company. And it's also interconnected um, uh, and uh, it is, um, connected to the alarm. And what happens is uh, uh, my horns and strobes will go off in my home house um, and they'll go off uh, if the smoke alarms go off too. Um, but it's a different horn and strobe uh, that goes off. So um, uh, to answer your correct correction, very short, yes, they need to be monitored. That is an added cost, um, but typically everybody uh, in these newer homes that we're building today installs a burglar alarm, some type of alarm system. And it's just another point to monitor. That's all it is. And typically I know that my monitoring company charges me three extra dollars a month to monitor that water flow alarm. That's so good to know. Burglar, and I, My burglar alarm is $35 a month and if I didn't have the sprinkler system, it would be $32 a month. Wow. Well, I, Guy, I really appreciate the time. I wish we could uh, keep going here, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we've got to stop here at this point. Um, you know, I would love to have you back on the show down the road for sure. Uh, you have an open invite here to, to Talking Fitchburg. And we, uh, from Adam and I both, we really appreciate your time, uh, knowledge in the area, and hopefully we can do, uh, do our part to keep uh, updating residents here in Fitchburg uh, and around the state and around uh, the U.S. on uh, the importance of putting these into homes. Well, I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to talk. Um, I am uh, open to any topics. Um, I do a radio show every Wednesday morning locally. I do one in the afternoon uh, every other week. So uh, anytime you guys want, uh, I am more than willing to uh, come on board and uh, talk fire prevention or uh, Packers or whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> well, I'm up for that. Dorn's never offered that. You know, it's all fire safety uh, when we get together. But uh, hey, we'll uh, we'll take it. Uh, uh, Dorn, uh, thank you for setting this up. I appreciate your time as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Chief. Wrapping up the show, I want to thank Guy from Kenosha Fire Department for helping us out. We'll get both parts of these online so you can check it out. Uh, and uh, just really good interview. I appreciate Adam Dorn setting that up. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow.